Water is a renewable resource, but it's not being used that way. Of the world's 37 largest groundwater aquifers, 30% of them are being depleted, meaning more water is being used annually that's being replenished. We are seeing freshwater ecosystems declining, so we need to be looking at opportunities to use the resource more efficiently and to develop supplies that are more sustainable. The Pacific Institute was founded in 1987 as an independent, nonpartisan, nonprofit policy research think tank. In our strategic planning process in 2015, we decided to become a water organization. And our mission now is to create and advance solutions to the world's pressing water challenges. We think policy engagement is critical, so we engage in policy at a number of different levels, working with local government, state, federal government, with corporations, with community groups. We've also testified before Congress. That really provides an avenue for us to take our research and put it into action. The Pacific Institute's current focus areas, the nexus between climate and water, safe and affordable water for all, corporate water stewardship, smart cities, sustainable agriculture, and healthy aquatic systems. When it comes to water and climate change, the expression in the water industry is, if climate is the shark, the water is the teeth, because that's where it's gonna bite. I remember when the Pacific Institute released its study on sea level rise. It recognized that people need to look at these problems in a concrete manner. When we think of climate change, it's so amorphous, it's hard to get our thoughts around it and what do we do. That work has been downloaded nearly 800,000 times. There were community organizations that were using the maps to demand that the city study the risks of sea level rise for their communities. And I think it led to a number of actions to try to advance adaptation to climate change. Agriculture uses between 70 and 80 percent of the water supply. In our work, we look at how they could be using more drip irrigation, more technologies to apply water where and when it's needed. We also look at opportunities for reusing municipal wastewater. This is something that's done in communities around the world and we'll need to be doing more of it in order to meet the needs of a growing population. In 2007, the UN Global Compact started a water initiative called the Sea Water Mandate. We serve as the secretariat for this global water stewardship platform, and today there are about 150 companies globally, and they range from apparel companies to food companies to Ford Motor Company and pharmaceutical companies like Merck and GlaxoSmithKline. From all of our work with the business community, we know that all you have to do is show how one company did it and what kind of benefit they got out of it and that's the fastest way to get all the peer companies to adopt the same measures. If we look at the areas where there's growth and demand for new water, it typically is cities. The good news is that we're already seeing some cities using water more efficiently. Major cities like Los Angeles, San Francisco, they have highly efficient appliances and fixtures in their homes. They're taking out their lawns and putting in native and low water use landscapes. And they're able to accommodate population growth and economic growth while taking less water from rivers and streams. 2.1 billion people in the world lack access to safe, bacteria-free water that's available when needed in homes. 200 million hours a day are spent by women and girls fetching water. But think about the opportunity cost of that. Think about the lost productivity. We worked with a diverse set of stakeholders to identify different programs and policies that we could put into place that could ensure universal access to safe and affordable water. The Pacific Institute has done a number of projects that have helped promote healthy aquatic ecosystems, looking at communities in the San Francisco Bay Area and the opportunities for them to be using less water. As a result of that work, Officials in San Francisco agreed to cap the amount of water that they were taking from the Tuolumne River. 
our work enabled a reduction in water withdrawals and therefore helped to promote a healthier ecosystem. For all of these innovative projects that we're helping to catalyze, we are doing so because we want to be able to analyze the efficacy of these innovations. The ones that actually have merit, we will look to scale. They are such a thought leader in this space. Not only do they start off with wonderful science-based research and then move towards solutions and they bring stakeholders together, but they continue to amplify that message. Look at the long-term trajectory around climate. It will take much longer to recover. Continuing to tell the world about our water problems and what we can do to solve it. I love rivers, I love streams, I love lakes, I love playing in them, <laughs> and I want to be sure there's enough there for future generations. There's really a basic human right to water, and so while I think that water needs to be left in ecosystems, people need water. That tension and that balance is something that I can work along with many other wonderful people and wonderful organizations to solve. The water is resilient, renewable, and it's vibrant. It's a lot of promise and a lot of reward to being able to have solutions that impact not only environment, but people on a daily basis.